Picking up with slide eight, Congress should be declaring war and initiating hostilities. Congress should be the one raising armies, making regulations regarding captures at sea, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, everything that's listed in the Constitution under the powers of Congress. Um, they don't, again, uh, they, they, in my best educated guess, they don't want to take on the responsibility for those things anymore. They'd rather blame the president. You, you are all very much allowed to think something different. That is just my educated opinion on the matter. They don't want to bear the responsibility for bad decisions anymore. And if there's a convenient guy to blame, then hey, why not? So what did the friend, yeah, Mr. Andrews. Uh, so is there any like, what, what, other than, I think you're completely right about them not wanting to take blame, but if they like officially declared war, what else would that mean? What else would change rather than just these, these fake wars that? Yeah, um, we'd mobilize as a country. Uh, the I would imagine, because you have to remember, I'm I'm 32, so I haven't I haven't been around for an actual declared war either. I would imagine that the draft would, there would be serious consideration given to reconstituting the draft. Uh, we would start probably, and I'm just kind of thinking back to what I've read about what happened during World War II. We would start being limited rationed on, on gas and other resources so it could go to the army. Um, we might, um, you know, uh, be asked to, to limit water usage. Um, there might be, I mean, I, I don't think this would probably happen, but I mean, I know during World War II there were mandatory blackouts at night, so no enemy aircraft could could bomb uh, civilian centers, so we would we would get a lot more into it. The war would affect us in a way that these fake wars haven't yeah. yet. Vanessa, is there another possibility of a draft, or is that kind of like a thing? Like, um, if it got bad enough, and we were if it. Involved If that was the case, if, if we were involved in a World War III scenario, I would imagine we would. I, I don't like that answer either, but I, I, I think that's what would happen. Now, do I know that's what would happen? No, and hopefully we'll never find out. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. I used to I used to do this when I said knock on wood, oh. <laughs> but I can't do that anymore because after the brain surgery, there's I, I all my skull isn't my skull anymore. I have titanium plates where parts of the cranium used to be, and it's you know what I'm even sadder about. Hair won't regrow there, oh, no. so. <laughs> So that's why I, that's part of the reason why I keep it long because if I shave it off, there, there's just these random bald spots. <laughs> because it's titanium plating, there's nothing. Yeah, there's no follicles or anything. <laughs> I know, I know. Did you buy it? Oh God! <laughs> so, so, what were the intentions of the framers in regards to the president's powers of war and foreign policy? We need to look to Federalist Paper Number Sixty Nine. Hamilton stressed the limited, very basic role of the president in foreign affairs, as opposed to the British model. Now, a lot of you asked the questions in the British model: um, Why? 
are we worried about the Parliament of Ireland? Why are we so, you know, why are we stressing so much about George III and the British? Well, it was all we knew at the time. There was no other political model, political set of theories, way to run a government that we knew how to do. We were making this up. I mean, we had, we had you know, sources, the Magna Carta, political writings of like Thomas Paine and uh, I'm drawing a blank now. Uh, uh, Vol Voltaire, maybe I, some some others, I, uh, you know, to look on. But we made this thing up. It's called the Great American Experiment for a reason. This hasn't been tried before, right? And George the Third was all he knew, all we knew. So George the Third and his ancestors, they could make war unilaterally. George the Third could just say, we are now at war with the French. The country would mobilize and they'd be at war with the French. The president, though, has to work with Congress. We wanted to make it harder. We didn't want to give one man that authority uh, to just be able to declare war. Now, we need to mention this because the president now routinely does make war without checking in with Congress or any sort of legitimate, you know, or without any sort of legitimate national security threat to the country. Now, this is a bit of, of, of murky waters here that we're treading in because what is the national security interest answer the national security interest is whatever the president of the day says it is. So the national security interests of the United States of America can, will, and do change every four to eight years, depending upon who's in the administration. So Obama had, oh, it's the first Tuesday of the month. I was wondering what the, okay. Obama had, you know, Libya, Gaddafi and all that. We went in there, Trump, uh, Somalia, we intervened there. And, um, you know, recent arguments really about the presidential war powers post-Cold War, because after the Soviet Union fell, we didn't have any great enemy to fight anymore. So there was this power vacuum. We were all that was left. We were the hegemon of the world, uh, centered on the idea that the president can do whatever he thinks is necessary to protect against a perceived national security threat without consulting Congress. Now, has there been a national security threat since the end of the Cold War? This is truly debatable. I'm not going to say yes, I'm not going to say no, this is up to you to decide completely with those critical thinking skills I've hopefully been instilling in you since January. But again, it changes the national security interests every four to eight years, depending on the administration. And because of this, Congress has been left largely out of the loop because this national security thing is left to the president of the day's discretion. And again, national security means anything the president wants it to. Reagan, you know, national security, we must get those Americans out of the American Middle School, school in Granada. We have to do it. It's in the American national security interests to do it. Would anything have happened to those students? Probably not. And I say probably because we'll never know for 100% certain because things broke a certain way. So Congress only has one power left, one real power left, and it's their own fault that they have this one power left, and that is to defund the military. Will Congress ever do that? 
No. No. They will not. And I'll tell you why. How many people in Congress do you think they'll get reelected? How many people in Congress do you think will get reelected, rather? Let's try that again. If, for instance, our boys are fighting in the Congo because the president, the president Biden has determined that that's the national security interest and he's exceeded the, uh, the War Powers Act, the War Powers Resolution Act, 90 days have gone by. Congress pulls the plug and says, Joe Biden, no more military. Now we've got 10,000 boys stuck in the Congo with no way home. So the military has been defunded. We, Congress just unilaterally pulled the plug. How many of the 535 members of Congress, House and Senate, 535, 435 and 100, are getting reelected if they'd pull something like that? What'd you say, Cadence? Yeah. Yeah. Say it was your father that got stuck in the Congo in this scenario. Are you going to vote for your congressman? You don't like your father? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully Victoria grows up not feeling the same way about me, but okay. <laughs> yeah, you're on. I, yeah, the honesty is something to be admired. So we, we don't have to look very hard to see that Congress and the President are both misbehaving. Congress not doing its job at all by not checking the President. The President is not doing his job by taking, even though he can and he's been left open to, by taking advantage of the things that Congress has abrogated its responsibility on. Mr. Andrews. So, since this is like one of the first times that we're not like, in a war mm -hmm. since forever, do you think there's any chance that they will do any defunding or try and allocate it anywhere else since there's not many active things happening right now? Like, do you think this is an opportunity that they could have? Um, I would say it's doubtful that there would be any defunding happening because of the situation right now. And if I use this video in the future, I'm recording this before the November 2022 elections, um, because there is a 50-50 Senate right now. So I don't think the Republicans in the Senate would necessarily play ball with any sort of idea that the military should be in any way lessened. So Congress's power to declare war applies even to a very limited war, like the quasi-war uh, with France in the very early 1800s. We weren't quite at war, but we were both ready. Uh, Congress said, <laughs> you, know, you can use the infantry, but that's it. That's all. Congress can do that if they want. You know, if we go into, uh, I don't know where we're going next. Say if we go to, you know, if we're, God forbid, is that really would be World War III. If we go over and start messing around in the East Asian region with China, Taiwan, all that after, after Russia dies down, um, you know, Congress could say, all right, President, you have the full authority to use all of the ships that we have, all of our fleet, all the submarines, all that. You shall not use any member of the Army or Air Force. You can't use any planes either. You just have to work with the Navy and Marines. That's all you've got. You can use uh, tactical nuclear weapons, but you can't use any 
Um, I don't even know what they're called. You know, of the big, big nuclear weapons. <laughs> Big nuclear weapons, let's just say, the ones that go boom. You get the big mushroom cloud. It's not funny, but I, I just don't know how else to describe it. I like the mushroom cloud. Yeah. It's, um, yes? Do they do this by defunding certain things, or do they literally just, like, write something that says you can't do this? Uh, yeah, they, they'll write something. It can't, it can't be done, so they in the declaration of war which is passed by the house and the senate and then signed by the president they'll forbid certain things they don't they don't routinely do this but it is they ha they do have the power to yeah so uh the first instance of a president claiming the right to initiate hostilities without congressional approval was truman uh, he didn't consult Congress. He went in on the UN's authorization, which is the only time a president has ever done that, to my knowledge anyway, uh, to Korea. We called it a policing action. 